one thing that I would like to ask, because we were faced uh, last year and the years before with the COVID crisis. And during the COVID crisis, when we could not actually go in person and perform some of our, um, we could not access some public services and some other services, we saw that we have to do a lot with the digitalization itself. And I think that uh, uh, Dr. Horvath said that uh, SSI is the base for the scalable uh, digital um, solutions and uh, and uh, for the scalable uh, digitalization. Um, Dr. Horvat, can you maybe uh, explain a little bit more about that? And uh, of course, uh, Mr. Boberai and Dr. Turkanovic just chip in when you feel it, it is good. Mm, yeah, of course. Uh, so let's start with the simple example how data is exchanged today. So. Today, usually, when, when we look, for example, about... Inf so, first of all, most is data is exchanged via email. It's easy to fake. There's a website, uh, buy a fake diploma. You you can get it. And, and no one... I mean, the process to verify whether information is uh, legit or not, it's hard to verify. So, so that's one thing. Now, once, once we trans transition to a format that it's easily verifiable, now we just need to uh, open up a playground where everyone can exchange information with anyone they want is the first step. But once we do that, we need to enable the verifiers to check under which uh, policies, under which regulation that particular information has, have been, has been issued. And for this, we need the, the additional layer I, I discussed about, uh, which is a bit more open that some of the federations we know today uh, because the, the federation model usually relies on one or several entities that that control and manage the trust I and mean, that's all fine i mean within the domain that will remain but uh but it's not scalable enough to to make to 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 make it global because then you just build a federation on top of a federation and and it quickly becomes complicated to to verify things that's why uh, I believe that the model that's presented and that's been tested uh, enables a simple and a bit more scalable um, uh, um, way of ex establishing trust. Okay, uh, but with using an SSI or a digital e-wallet, what it means for, what are the consequences for a regular user? I believe that here some of our uh, listeners are also the the regular users that are just interested into the blockchain technology. What are the consequences? What it actually means? That it means, I don't know, uh, less uh, scams? Does it mean uh, we will have, uh, I don't know, pre, um, we will access some public uh, services easier because uh, some forms will be filled for us? Uh, what exactly is the consequence uh, for the user? Maybe Dr. Turkanovic, you can start. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> my opinion towards this question is that uh, we have to think about SSI as a changing paradigm in how data is exchanged. And um, we have to uh, we, we have to differentiate, for example, in in, in the following, let's say that uh, the EU currently uh, plays with two or three so-called patterns of uh, data exchange and interactions. Uh, one of these patterns, it's already implemented and in a piloting phase, meaning that uh, entities exchange data between, the, between them about a user. If you think about it like in this sense, you as, for example, Tanya or myself, we we go to the, let's say, Dutch government and, and present a, a, and want to, let's say, open a company there. What, what currently is piloted and enabled in the EU is that the, the Dutch government can now, through EIDAS, automatically connect to the Slovenian government and the Slovenian government would give them the data about us, of course, 
we are those who say, okay, we enable this and we give the Slovenian government the right to do this. But the data exchange was literally or technically provided between the governments itself. What this enables is that the, they are connected between each other. And of course, the Slovenian government trusts the Dutch government, the Dutch government trusts the Slovenian government, etc. But where are we involved? How we, we are not controlling the exchange of data. And SSI actually brings this to another paradigm because the governments or the agencies or the companies, they will never be connected between each other and exchange data about us. We are the ones who get the data from one agency government and give it to another agency or government disclosing only the data that we want. It's we, we break this bilinear communication and we create this triangle, which Dr. Horvat and, and Mr. Poberai and myself, we already shown. Um, so that's the idea of SSI. The EU identity wallet actually uh, will brings this closer and the EU also doesn't know if SSI will really be used in, in uh, in the, the, the identity wallets, but what the identity wallets bring to the table is user friendliness. So that, that's the idea that using our phones, we authenticate using our phones. We sign documents using our phones, our wallets. We actually, uh, create this idea of exchange data. So th that's the idea of the wallets. Uh, and SSI has, has its own, let's say, paradigm, in, in, and maybe they will join, but this is not really sure for 100%. Mm -hmm. yet. Okay. Dr. Horvat, maybe you would like to add something to this? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the great challenge with wallets still remains. Uh, uh, I mean, for, for our, ideally for us and users, we would have like one digital wallet that would enable us to store our information about um, any information we need. So you would you, you can have tickets, you could have access to bank accounts, bank cards, and other information, everything stored in one wallet, right? But now, uh, the, 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 so, so challenge today is not, not, not only that there, there are several paradigms, as, as Mr. Tukanich pointed out, but even within the paradigms, the, the, the market is where like it, it's fractionated. So, so different standards, different formats, different approaches. And, and today everything is not interoperable. So as soon as, if we don't get or establish like a common denominator or like a minimal set of capabilities that all, all wallets, uh, uh, wallets needs to support, two things will happen. I, either Google and Apple will take over with their wallets because wallet is already in part of the OS and they can they have the leverage to to also talk with browser providers and and everyone in the space which means that again all not not only the information that they already have but also information that can be used for identification and authentication uh, will be available to to those parties which Okay, on, on one hand, it's, it can be very convenient uh, for us, for end users, but on the other hand, it becomes a bit more scary because whoever will control that information will actually be able to also control user's identity. So protecting the data would be extremely expensive and hard. Uh, so ideally, uh, I hope at least that EU will go in the direction where they will establish a bit more defined standard uh, for, for wallets and, and protocols so that it won't be like IDAS version one, where we know there are nodes that translate information from one format to another, which is quite uh, cumbersome and expensive. Uh, and if that would form a basis or a baseline so that other companies would build on that, but I think Mr. Poberai also has a because one type of wallet we already have, like like one pass is one kind of wallet that is already there, so they they already have experience with how to build highly secure and, and uh, like wallets that can operate with the highest assurance levels and work with banks, which we know are highly regulated. Uh, so so yeah, let's see how this evolves, but. Uh, 
I hope it will be best for the users so, so that we, we won't have one wallet per domain or one wallet per application, which would basically kill the, 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 the user experience we, we want to have as, as end users. Mr. Poberai, please, uh, also your take on the okay, thank you. Uh, on the topic. From the, let's say, service provider point of view, I think the technology is, is great. It's going on the right way. But it's up to, to us, service providers on the private sector, how we will implement this. It will, it, it will be complicated. It will not, not be adopted. From the user point of view, we should use KISS, keep it simple, stupid method. So it must be straightforward, simple, secure. And I think that uh, services like wallet, SSI and everything should be regulated from the EU. So we will have, we would have one standard, only secured providers and trusted providers will uh, issue uh, credentials and things like that. So it's, it can be very dangerous. Okay. But it's it's up to us how we will implement it. So this is why we are uh, working together with Alan and uh, Mr. Tukanovic. We are trying to create a simple and straightforward framework uh, and would like to have nice user experience for issuer, owner and a uh, holder and uh, verifier. Okay, yes, uh, certainly needed because also one of the things that uh, happened during the COVID crisis, at least here in Slovenia, where uh, we are also based, is that uh, we, we had to deal a lot with the digital certificates and the user experience is not always simple. And especially for the older users, those that are not technologically very savvy, it was really, really complicated. And uh, sometimes uh, they did not get the services they needed and they could not get it any other way. So this is a, a good way to, to do it, as you said, uh, KSS. Uh, we have a, a one question from our audience, uh, Maria Ribaychuk, they are from the Blockchain Factory uh, that are based in Greece, uh, Saloniki. Uh, they are thanking for uh, all of your presentations and they're, um, uh, have a question about bureaucracy. It is a big problem in certain countries and it can slow down the implementation of technologies. Do you think there is a lack of pan-European -re regulation in this sphere that would ease the bureaucracy in, in such uh, countries? Uh, or what else could be done to speed up the process? If I may add, the sure. idea of EIDAS 1 was to bring all EU bureaucracies to, to a common denominator in legal and technical terms. But as we see, and as the EU Commission saw, it didn't bring it there. Uh, there are still, it, it took so much time, especially because there are so many uh, different bureaucracies, different countries, different expectations, requirements, limitations, etc. Some countries are more, uh, let's say, uh, devoted to the EIDAS idea. Some are more reserved, etc. So, yes, the EU Commission knows that, that there is this pan-European regulation uh, problem. And that's why they push towards EIDAS 2.0 to, to, uh, to bring it more forward. This time, in comparison towards EIDAS 2.1, uh, sorry, 1.0, they didn't give real, at least in my point of view, uh, timelines. Now with 2.0, they gave the proposal for, uh, for this regulation and they said the first time by 2023, uh, by September, each EU member state has to deliver the wallets. They, they made a much more bolder requirement towards the member states. But still, that does, this doesn't have to mean that the member states will comply because, because of their own problems, etc. But at least they are pushing towards it more rigorously. So I hope it will bring, bring one step further. Uh, but one of the problems how the EU also uh, wants to tackle is that because as a lot of us already explained within the presentations and the answers to your questions. 
the EU and, and the community doesn't still not know which technologies will be used, how it will be used, which patterns, etc. And EU cannot and the EU Commission doesn't want to push us towards one of those technologies and one of those principles. So what are they doing is they are now currently, for example, funding within the digital scheme of funding to uh, different projects. One which will purely be e, uh, EU digital wallets to pilot them without e, uh, without EPSI. Uh, and another project which will also be funded, also EU identity wallets with EPSI. So they are funding various communities with a lot of, let's say, uh, effort and funding to, to, to actually see which technology will be better implemented, better uh, focused, better uh, user friendly. And in this way, they're actually uh, seeing and, and pushing towards to see which one will be better and to actually help the member states, uh, uh, let's say, choose between them. So they're doing their best in this confused and complex situation of EU. <laughs> Dr. Horvath, would you like to add maybe something to this uh, bureaucracy issue that is a, a real issue, I believe, in many uh, member states of the European Union? Yeah, it's it's more, I mean, it's it can, we see that it's also like a chicken egg problem, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't know which technology and which formats to choose. So what we can do as, as like, uh, like, companies or organizations i mean i mean can we do something about it because they will so so whatever will be selected so how should we need to understand that decision makers want something that's stable so also our contribution to different standardization body, bodies and our contribution to to developing technologies can also help to, to maybe showcase or steer what's what's possible out there because there are so many options, so many decisions that it's it's hard to select one. And of course, the, the European Commission doesn't have the, the mandate to, to dictate a, a, a certain uh, solution. So we can end up, or we will probably end up in a situation where different domains will follow different, uh, uh, because different, uh, so they're launching different pilots for different domains. They can they have different properties, different technical and business requirements. So it's quite possible that we will end up with at least several different uh, technologies. However, it's it's also up to us to decide whether we want to to to, to just wait uh, for the decision makers to, to 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 come up with a proposal, or or help to drive the change by showing how things can be done. So yeah, we, we, we need to, 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 to decide on that. I think it's, uh, I mean, we, we need to understand that everyone of us can contribute. So it's not uh, because uh, everything that's under discussion, we need to, so, so things are still being standardized, new things are being tested. So, and this is where we can make uh, a change uh, already today. And Mr. Boberai, um, your company is also dealing with, uh, uh, let's say, highly regulated uh, industries that are not very immune of, of also about the bureaucracy. So I would like uh, also maybe your view. How do you see if this problem is solvable? <laughs> not sure. It should be solved on the EU level. On national level, we have, uh, I think we have much more difficult uh, regulations than in Greece regarding, I don't know, video identification, specific in Slovenia, then it's, uh, I think it should be regulated in EU without, without exceptions. So this could be a, a solution for uh, countries that are struggling with the bureaucracy. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, when we are talking about digital identities and digitalization, there is a one topic that is uh, usually also discussed, uh, and that are the elections. Uh, when uh, is a possibility to, this is one of the public services, uh, to do elections online uh, from our home? Uh, and uh, is this uh, uh, now a future that is uh, seen or is it something in the distant future? Maybe Dr. Turkanovic. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I know that you don't like that question, but it has to be asked, you know, it is something that is discussed and it yes. was an issue also during the COVID crisis because people were infected, could not get from their homes. But yeah, are we there yet or will be or? In technological terms, we were there yet like 10 years ago already. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now there. Also, if we go um, and use these, let's say, novel technologies like blockchain and SSI, we could create like software or, or hardware which could support this electronic elections, but it's not, it's not the technological problem. There are other problems like political problems. Some, some, some people don't wish to support uh, let's say, uh, integrity on the voting systems and, 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 um, yeah. So I, I don't think we will implement them <laughs> so fast all over the world. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Horvath, what, what do you think? We saw, yes, political questions, but, um, yeah, I mean, he, well, we saw that they, they tried in us and then yeah, I, I think it's it's even though it's possible in in practice, it's quite challenging also from a technical perspective because you still need to ensure that everyone functions, everything functions correctly, and and basically whoever designs the system needs to decide on where to put the trust boundary because tr like fully trustless voting system, not sure is, if that's possible. So you at least need to trust the hardware. I mean, with all the, the qualified services we have, uh, it would be possible because we know we can authenticate with the highest level of, uh, um, of assurance, but then the question is how to achieve anonymity. Uh, so, so yeah, it is possible, I, I believe, but, but uh, yeah, I don't believe we'll, we'll, see, we'll see this in practice anytime soon. But yes, one of the issues was also that is really the, the person in question in front of the computer or, you know, somebody could do this for me. Is this still something that could be, um, is this still an issue or this is solvable by, by the technology? I mean, I think Mr. Pogarai can 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 give okay. a more exact answer on this, but but I think I mean, look, qualified uh, signature, ensure. I mean, it, it's the pos highest possible level we can achieve, and uh, and it's it's recognized cross border across all Europe in all courts as as your handwritten signature. So this is as mm -hmm. this is as far as we can get today. Mr. Poberai, we are waiting for your verdict. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As uh, Mr. Turkanovic said, uh, the technology is here, everything is possible. But I think it's not only political, it's also a national question. So my opinion is that some countries will adopt it, some countries maybe later, and some countries never. Okay. Then we'll see. We have and another uh, question. Maybe, maybe some things should stay as they are. Okay. Uh, we have another question from our audience. Tony Chapon is the president of the uh, Bitcoin Association of Slovenia. And he has a question about the security uh, of end users. It is nice to hear that we will have everything on our phones, simple and easy, but phones are very vulnerable and users are not aware of that. So security is a big problem in my opinion. Mr. Uh, Dr. Trokanovic, what do you say? Is a security big problem? Sure. As someone who is teaching a um, course on cybersecurity on higher education level, uh, I would totally agree. Um, to, 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 to emphasize, uh, during the COVID, Slovenia onboarded I'm going to make things up, but, but I think at least 10,000 elderly people on qualified certificates using SMS pass. I, I think I, you probably all saw how things were elderly people standing in the line, filling up formulas, 
and were given qualified electronic certificates, or let's say at least the possibility to use them, um, which are, let's say, to some form legally also bounding, uh, but nobody taught them about cybersecurity at all. And these are people who don't know how to use, for example, normal computers, and now they are given uh, a lot of power. So should we have done that, considering the possible consequences? Yes. Uh, so we should have done that also 10 years earlier. Uh, we have done it now because of COVID, but we should have also educated them more. Slovenia is now doing this with these uh, schemes to educate people in digitalization matter. But uh, yeah, so one problem is to, to understand the people that they should understand what the consequences can be. And we need to teach people about them, not only pe young people, they already know that, but also elderly people. I already count myself into these people, but uh, we should and when we talk about the secure, technical security, of course, all of these EU digital wallets, and Mr. Poberai can also explain it by himself, these digital wallets, they are using all the standards which are defined to ensure security. These standards are defined. If you want to be part of the banking system, you have to follow the PDA standards. If you want to be part of it, you have, if you want to, to play in this uh, business services level, you have to comply with the standards and your software has to comply. It. And it is, it is, it, they will comply. Surely they are probably now SSI digital wallets or some other wallets on the market, new from startups. Maybe they are flexible in terms of security, but uh, again, they will, it, it will be decided by the users who, to whom they trust. So I hope I wasn't too long. No, so certainly not. Mr. Poberai, yeah, yeah, can you maybe add something to, to all yeah. this? The phone, from technical point of view, can be safe. There are crypto devices on the phone. You have uh, several access codes. But uh, it's all about the, the awareness from user perspective. So the, the very cruel truth is that not everyone should be on the internet like it's not on the road or not piloting this is the reality so it's very difficult to explain to users in let's say two days something that is going on for several years so this is uh, a serious issue that everyone is addressing now even we as recono we are organizing some courses, webinars, cooperating with police, uh, but it's, it's, not, it's not that simple. This is something that should be addressed on a national level. Okay, I hope that uh, also somebody that can address this on a national level is listening today. Dr. Horvat, maybe um, your point of view on the security is the end user really the main problem here, the main issue? Well, if there's a link you can click on, <laughs> uh, there's certainly a percentage of people will click on the link, right? So so it, it is possible to, so first to answer the question, I mean, it is possible to, to secure applications to a very high degree. Uh, of course, this also requires some external services and, and external monitoring. And we know that uh, so some uh, phone providers are, are also come with like secure elements, but still there needs to be like third services that monitor because you need to ensure that operating system is secure, that uh, nothing has been modified. So a, a lot is, has been done uh, uh, in the field. Uh, there are also standards and like security experts working on the topics. So. It is possible, but uh, yeah, I think I believe the user is the main uh, issue. So because if user is not security aware, no matter how secure the device is, it won't help. I mean, if if I give you a, a key that's super secure, but you're not aware that you you cannot give that that key to any to to some other person, then yeah, uh, it can be as secure as possible, but still. Someone else will get access to your door. 
Mr. Bovera, you wanted to add something. Yes, I'd like to add that from user perspective, there are two main uh, concerns. There are several, there are too many different solutions for authentication or identification on whatever, at least for now, there are almost every bank has its own almost every insurance, every service provider. So it's very difficult for user to accept, to absorb all of this information and the uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, concepts, uh, what's, what's going on. So I think we need some, some kind of uh, unification of authentication protocols uh, in, a, in a way of the, the user is experiencing uh, this, this would be uh, the right solution, I think. Okay. Okay. I think we have a question. Yes, we have another question. Uh, Jovana Javolovic is uh, uh, asking. I follow up on the previous question, but from the perspective of the verifier, how can fintech companies uh, that are also facing security issues and are most dealing with the issue by introducing several layers of identity check, ID and biometrics, or selfie? How can a company introduce SSI? with as little, little info as possible and stay secure at the same time. Maybe Mr. Boberai, if you start this time. <laughs> well, the fintech should follow AML or uh, in Slovenia, ZPPDFT. So there are several requirements. So it, I think it's not, uh, it's not that simple. Technically, it's, it's very easy, but you have to follow local rules regarding anti-money laundering law so there's no clear question we can we can have direct chat but uh, it's not it, it really it really depends and there's another maybe confusing things when a user go uh, goes to bank opens account there are some red statements don't share your information with anyone and there when two years uh, passes the bank will call him and ask for new personal uh, personal ID, copy of ID, so if for user it's confusing. It's, it's not that simple. Uh, Dr. Horvat, Dr. Turkanovic, would you like maybe add something to this uh, question? If, if I may add, because I have then to leave at 15.30. Um, in terms of the KYC process, um, which is probably the same with the DEFI as other uh, with the fintech and with other banking systems, uh, I would include SSI in terms that you would connect with the possible uh, you holder and the one who are you verifying and require from him, let's say, at least two or three types of verifiable attestations from various issuers in terms that he gives you a verifiable attestation, a credential, stating that he is who he is, that he, for example, is the person, one, one from the government, one from the bank, one from the one other, in order to multiply the uh, number of issuers you're actually also verifying that this person really exists and is who he really is, for example. This would be another layer towards the, uh, towards the security of uh, fintech but uh, just replacing the existing cameras biometrics etc this wouldn't be really possible with ssi yeah. this is not what ssi really actually tries to solve okay we will just wait for dr horvat and then uh, wrap it up so dr horvat if you'd like to add to this question yeah i i mean that that's uh, i mean the so ssi is not changing the way we onboard people what SSI could change is what Mr. Turkan just mentioned. So today we are submitting in, in most KYC processes, um, the, like paper documents or copies of documents or just photos of documents, right? And those, that information is not really verifiable in a sense that, okay, you trust the photo you get. But if we digitalize the information, so as we, as we discussed or presented in presentations, this would be one step going towards uh, a more like secure and reliable onboarding process, but it would definitely not replace uh, any of the existing processes for onboarding that exist today. So the simplest case would be that user presents an e-sealed uh, digital document issued by a issuer that is trusted by the, for, for example, KYC provider. Uh, and I think uh, the, the, also the use case we will present in October uh, will demonstrate that. So how 
a user can get information from one service provider and present it to another one where, where the receiver or the, or the verifier can in a simple way verify the integrity of the information and all the information that's that comes from the user and 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 where all the process still complies with all the regulation because in the end information is e sealed by a uh, qualified uh, e seal which is recognized within eu so, so that's just just to add to this i hope that it helps uh, thank you very much for your presentations and thank you oh, thanks also to dr trukanovic that had to leave um, maybe just Mr. Poberai and Dr. Horvath, one final thought about the future of SSI um, for the end of this event. Dr. Horvath. Well, uh, we need to go step by step, uh, build on what's already built, and uh, I think we'll get there eventually, but still uh, a lot needs to be done in terms of education and also showcasing how we can gradually achieve the goal because we will not turn things around overnight. Uh, so yeah, uh, step by step and with each, with each new use case, uh, experience growth. Uh, so that's that's essential to, to move things forward. Mr. Poberai, your final thought. <laughs> okay, I think it's a very great uh, framework and uh, I see very, very, bright future in it but of course there are some some there are some steps to be to be done but i think we are on the right track this is good the future is bright thank you very much uh, again and uh, to our audience if you'd like to deep dive into the ssi and the digital digital identity even more then check the event the rebooting of the web of trust in hug that is starting on the 26th of september Thank you all. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your time and see you in uh, other events that will be organized by the Blockchain Alliance Europe. Goodbye. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs>